Welcome to Thrive, another great day to explore God's Word. Um, I hope you're really enjoying these studies. Um, I know I am. Uh, every time I, I do one of these, I am challenged, I'm blessed, I'm encouraged. Um, it's great to hear from some of you um, what God is doing in your lives. Uh, thank you. Keep that up. Keep writing comments. Send me messages if you know how to do that. Um, I, I It is a blessing to me. And I really, I, I told someone today, I said, you know, um, I consider this a, a success if um, if God's you know working with with any with any anybody you know is getting something out of this and it's helping them in their Christian life and I hope it's helping you guys. Um, we're continuing in Matthew. We're in Matthew chapter five, and we're gonna um, start reading in verse three, and we're gonna end on verse nine, and we'll be speaking about uh, verse nine today. If you want to hear the, the other beatitudes. Go back to the other the other days. Each day is a different beatitude for the last several days um, as we've been studying the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Guys, this is a... I read this and I, and I just... Man, God hit me hard. Peacemakers. Peacemakers. Those who make peace. All right, let's start off this way, okay? The ultimate peacemaker is God Himself, right? That's why I think that when we when we do what our heavenly Father does, that's why people say we're, we're called sons of God, right? When we become peacemakers, as God is our great peacemaker, we are called sons of God. God is the great peacemaker. We were enemies with God ever since Adam and Eve had been into that forbidden fruit, right? We were sinners and we were enemies with God and 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 um, separated, right? I mean, we were like this with God and that separation happened and, and sin separates and and with that for for millennia we've been separated from God and but God having a desire to make peace with man and, and make peace with His creation did the ultimate thing. He he came down to this earth, born of a virgin lived a life here, a perfect life without sin, and then offered himself a sacrifice for our sins so that we can be reconciled and brought back together into a perfect relationship with God again. That enmity, that, that, that war against God was then made, peace was made in it. God, the ultimate peacemaker. That's our example. God, the ultimate peacemaker. I think those who have experienced the peacemaking of God want to see peace happening elsewhere. But here's the thing, right? We have this war going on inside of us, the flesh versus the spirit inside, and, and it's a little battle going on raging inside of us. And when the flesh is winning that battle, guys, man, we make some decisions that are just not helpful for peace, right? We may act unloving towards people. We may, you know, say things that we probably shouldn't have said or, or say it in a way that we probably shouldn't have said it. Um, man, it's just over and over again, guys. We, we do that, but, but, but when the Spirit is ruling, when our hearts are pure, when we, again, look at the Beatitudes, all of them, right? When we recognize our, our utter need for God in, in, in poor in spirit, right? And we, we mourn and we, we, it breaks our hearts what that separation has done. Um, you know, when we, uh, when we hunger and thirst for righteousness, when, when mercy is important, when, when, when we're pure in heart, then, then we want to be peacemakers. First of all, we want others to have peace with God, right? We want that vision to be whole. It, it should break our hearts. We should be, we should be helping people find peace, in that, you know, it brings me to a little bit of a um, evangelism uh, technique, I guess. I don't know 
my wife and I, we love to take our kids to, to the to the parades. Right, my son has been marching in band in the parades in our city for years. Uh, my daughter was a princess um, for the festival in our town, and you know, so she was on the float to the parade, and we love to go to parades. And inevitably, at every one of our parades, there's a group of Christians that come out with their loudspeakers. You know, um, you know, they carry on these huge, you know, speakers and they speak into microphones and, and, and broadcast so loud. And they're broadcasting the truth of the Word of God. Right? But they're doing it in a way that isn't making peace with others. It makes people mad. It upsets them. It, it just, the people aren't listening. They're just bothered by these people being obnoxious. And... I think when we're trying to make peace with people, have people make peace, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing, man. It's something that invests time and energy and, and, and commitment towards somebody. And, and I'm, not, I'm not saying they're wrong um, in what they're doing. I'm not saying that at all. I want to be clear on that. But if you're trying to help people find peace or make peace with God, and maybe it's some real commitment with somebody. Maybe make yourself vulnerable with someone. Maybe have those hard conversations with people and 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 love people right a peacemaker loves he loves loves one another loves people guys we gotta be peacemakers in the peacemakers in the church peacemakers uh, we need to be peacemakers in the church as well right with our brethren so many times i've seen christians get mad at other christians i've been mad at other christians i've had other christians mad at me and I haven't always responded in a way that's trying to make peace. But I should, and I want to, I desire it more than anything. I mean, more than I can't think of anything much more than I want than to have peace with, with my with the brethren, with each other. And yet I've seen Christians get offended by each other who won't talk to each other again. I've seen churches split over, you know, over dumb reasons. Um, I've seen people leave the faith. Because of the way someone acted and treated somebody, there wasn't that peacemaking amongst each other in love. And that, as a Christian, ought to break our hearts. That ought to be one of those things we mourn for. We, we mourn for. And we need to be peacemakers. Peacemaking is hard. It requires sacrifice, just as Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross. We need to sacrifice our pride. We need to sacrifice our own ambition. We need to sacrifice our own feelings sometimes and, and 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 go forward and make peace and love with love each other love one another because i wonder if there's is there someone in your life right now you can think of that's just maybe you're not at peace with somebody right now could be somebody in the church it could be somebody outside the church it could be a family member but you're not at peace with them right now we're going to pray in a moment and i want you to pray for that person and I want you to ask God to help you, to help you make peace with them in whatever way you can. I wonder if there's somebody who doesn't know Jesus, who's currently at war with Jesus, and somebody that you're willing to say, I'm going to invest with that person, I'm going to help that person make peace with God by accepting Jesus Christ. God's done all the work. You just need to help them see who, who God and who Jesus really are. If there's something like that, you guys, you can pray for We'll be praying in a moment. Pray for those people. Make a commitment for this, guys. Make peace. Be a peacemaker. Be a son of God. Let's pray. Father, God, you're the ultimate example to us. You loved us when we were enemies. You cared about me when I didn't care about you. And Lord, I pray that um, you help me to be appreciative of that, Lord, and to love to love you, to love you more. God, I want to pray for those who are listening, who've listened to this, and have thought about somebody in their lives, somebody in their life, whether they're in church or not, Lord, family member, maybe whoever it might be. Lord, you know their hearts, you know what they're thinking, you know the person that they're thinking about. Lord, give these people the strength and the humility and the love and the mercy and the, the, the mournfulness, Lord, to go forward to these people. 
to put themselves out there, Lord, to, to be vulnerable and make peace. In your example, Lord, the great peacemaker, help us to be peacemakers as well. Lord, we think of the people that are in our lives that don't know you. They currently don't understand the peace that you give, Lord, the peace that, that you're offering. Lord, help us to be, um, be a good steward of the people you're putting into our lives in that regard. To help them see that you're the ultimate peacemaker and they can have peace with you as well. Lord, we'll thank you for it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I want to encourage you. If you've taken a step of faith today and you're going to make peace with someone, why don't you share in the comments how that worked out, what God did in there. Encourage one another with those, with, you, with, your, with your stories. All right? Guys, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Thanks a lot for joining me.